A young man stands in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April, is this young man's birthday. Though it was 13 years ago he was given life, it is only today he will be given a name. What will the name of this young man be? Enter name. Zeusmel Poop Lord. Try again. John Egbert. Examine room. Your name is John. As was previously mentioned, it is your birthday. A number of cakes are scattered about your room. You have a variety of interests. You have a passion for really terrible movies. You like to program computers, but you are not very good at it. You have a fondness for paranormal lore and are an aspiring amateur magician. You also like to play games sometimes. What will you do? John, quickly retrieve arms from drawer. Your arms are in your magic chest, poop lord. Remove cake from magic chest. Out of sympathy for John's perceived lack of arms, you pick up the cake for him and put it on his bed. John, quickly retrieve arms from magic chest. You retrieve your fake arms from the chest. You use these for hilarious antics. You capture log them in your Silidex. You have no idea what that actually means, though. There are other items in the chest. John, examine contents of chest. In here, you keep an array of humorous and mystical artifacts, each one a devastating weapon in the hands of a skilled magician or a cunning prankster. You are neither of these things. Among the artifacts are two fake arms, currently capsulogged in your Silidex, one pair of trick handcuffs, one stunt sword, one magician's hat, one pair of beagle puss glasses, several smoke pellets, several blood capsules, and one copy of Colonel Sassaker's daunting text of magical frivolity and practical japery, and one copy of Harry Anderson's Wise Guy by Mike Caveney. Some of this stuff may come in handy at some point. For now, you decide to just take the smoke pellets. John, capture log smoke pellets. You stow the smoke pellets on one of your capture log cards in your Silidex. You still aren't totally sure what that means, but you are starting to get the hang of this vernacular at least. You have two empty capture log cards remaining. John, equip fake arms. You aren't totally sure if equip is a verb copacetic with the abstract behavioral medium in which you dwell, but you give it a try anyways. Unfortunately, you cannot access the fake arms. Their card is underneath the one you just used to couch lug the smoke pellets. You will have to use the pellets first in order to access the arms. But this is probably unadvisable since you just make your room lousy with smoke. Your Silidex's fetch modus is currently dictated by the logic of a stack data structure. You were never all that great with data structures and you find the concept puzzling and mildly irritating. But with any hope, perhaps you will advance new more practical fetch modi for your Silidex, with a little more experience. John, examine Problem Sleuth poster. Is it even possible to get any more hard-boiled than that? You really doubt it. This poster was one of your wisest purchases. This is a nice spot on the wall next to it. You've been meaning to hang another poster there soon. John, read note on drawer. This note is rich with the aromas of fatherly aftershaves and colognes. Beside the note is a rolled up poster. John, take poster. Another birthday artifact. You wonder what is printed on the poster. You'll need some way to hang it on your wall. John, acquire hammer and nails. They will come in handy. You first place the hammer into your Silidex. But now all of your capture log cards are full. 
You wonder what will happen if you try to take the nails. You guess it doesn't hurt to try. John, take nails. You capture log four nails into the, ta into the top card and push all the artifacts down a card. The fake arms are pushed entirely out of the deck. Oh well, they're probably completely useless anyway. But you probably don't want to do that again, unless you want to drop the smoke pellets and suffer the consequences. In any case, you now feel like you have gathered enough things to get down to business and do some really important stuff. The next thing you do will probably be exceptionally meaningful. John, squawk like an imbecile and shit on your desk. This is the dumbest idea you've had in weeks. Stupid, stupid, stupid. And yet the polished surface on your desk, it beckons. John, combine the nails and hammer. You merge the top two cards. The hammer and nails are now capsule logged on the same card and can be used together. Use hammer nails on poster. You use the hammer and nails card in conjunction with the card beneath it. John, nail poster to wall. You use the hammer, nails, and poster in the blank space on the wall. It's glorious. Exactly what you wanted. The old man really came through this time. John, examine Con Air poster. Put the bunny back in the box. I said, put the bunny back in the box. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? John, examine Deep Impact poster. Morgan Freeman's genteel homespun mannerisms were perfect qualities for a president residing over a crisis. Oceans rise, cities fall, hope survives. Wow. Films about impending apocalypse fascinate you. Plus, a black president? Now you've seen everything! John, examine calendar. You've marked your birthday the 13th of April. Another day you marked was supposed to be the arrival date for the highly touted Suburb Beta launch. It's been three days already. It's starting to become a sore subject with you. John, eat cake. You are sick to death of cake. You've been eating it all day and you have no intention of clogging your Silidex with it either. The cake stays put for now. You hear a notice from your computer. Someone is messaging you. John, examine incoming message. You pull up to your computer. This is where you spend most of your time. You decorated your desktop with some rather handsome wallpaper, which you made yourself. You are really proud of it. Your desktop is also littered with various programming project files. You are so bad at programming, sometimes you wonder why you even bother with it. Your pester chum application is fla flashing. Someone is trying to get in touch with you. John, open pester chum. Only one of your chums is logged in. He sent you a message. John, open message. Hey, so uh, what sort of insane loot did you make in today? Um, I got a little monster in his pocket. Uh, it's so awesome. I'm going to watch it again today. Uh, the apple juice scene was so funny. Oh hell, that is just a that is such a coincidence. I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet. It is like fucking Christmas up in here. Okay, that's fine. But I just have one question and then a word of caution. Have you ever seen a movie called Little Monster starring Howie Mandel and Fred Savage? But the seal on the bottle is unbroken. Are you suggesting someone p piss on my apple juice at the factory? All I'm saying is, don't you think Monster Howie Mandel has the power to do something as simple as reseal a bottle? Try using your brain, numbats. Why did the fat kid, or whoever drank it, not know what piss tasted like? I mean, his reaction was nigh instantaneous. It was the 15th day in a row Howie Mandel peed in his juice. Okay, I can accept that. Monster B-list celebrity douchebags are cunning and persistent pranksters. Also, Fred Savage, Savage has a really punchable face. But who cares about this? Let's stop talking about it. Did you get the beta yet? Uh, no. Did you? Man, I got two copies already. But I don't care. I'm not going to play it or anything. The game sounds boring. You see how it got slammed in Game Bro? Game Bro is a joke, and you know it. Yeah, why don't you go check your mail? It, maybe it's there now. Alright. 
John, look out window. You see the view of your yard from your window. Hanging from the tree is your tire swing. In a kid's yard, a tree without a tire swing is like a proper gentleman without a monocle. That is to say, he can hardly con be considered a terribly proper gentleman at all. And then beside your driveway is a mailbox. John, examine mailbox. The little red arm swingy dealy thing or whatever it is called is flipped up. What the hell is that thing called anyways? You do not have time for these semantics. The red flippy lever thing means you have new mail and that means the beta might be there. John, go outside and check mailbox. You are about to hurry downstairs when you hear a car pull into the driveway. It looks like your dad has returned from the grocery store. Oh great, he's beating you to the mail. John, forget it, check mail later. If you go down if you go downstairs to get it, he will likely monopolize hours of your time. You decide to chill out here for a while while the dust settles. Sometimes you feel like you are trapped in this room. Stuck, if you will. In a sense which probably borders on the titular. And now your chapter is pestering you again. The clockwork of friendship turns ceaselessly, operating the swing lever dealies of harassment in perpetuity. Whatever, the dude can just hold his damn horses. John, examine games on CD Rack. You've put countless man hours into this assortment of quality titles. Bard Quest. The Caper Haven. It. Problem sleuth, and it don't stop. What pumpkin? Ghostbusters 2 MMORPG. Little Monsters, the game. And Harry Anderson, call my bluff. John, read Colonel Sassaker's daunting text. You, you decide to consult with the colonel's bottomless wisdom. Good grief, this thing is huge. It could kill a cat if you dropped it. But to really dig into this hefty book, you will have to capture log it. You are not sure you are ready to log jam your other artifacts beneath it just yet. John, capture log fake arms again. What did you just say? You don't want to clog up your... Oh, Jesus. In a momentary lapse of concentration, you accidentally capture along the arms again. John, set pester chump status to bully. You don't think the situation is quite dire enough to go all the way to rancorous. But you still feel the pester chump client should reflect your mood change in some way. Bully will have to do, you guess. This unsurprisingly, does nothing whatsoever. Oh right, you forgot your chum is still pestering you. John, answer chum. Is it there? Please say yes. Maybe you can play it with TT. She's been pestering me all day about it. She's macking on me hard all the time. I start to feel embarrassed for her. I mean, not that I can blame her or anything. Uh, yes, it's understandable because you are really attractive. I am attracted to you. Thank you. Yeah, JK, haha. <laughs> no, I don't have it yet. My dad has the mail, and I guess I have to go get it from him and see if it's there. And I've been busy spending all afternoon shitting around with my stupid Silidex. It's so frustrating. Uh, what's your modus? What? Uh, how do you retrieve artifacts from it? Oh, like one at a time, I guess. And if I put too much shit in, something falls out. Stack? <laughs> what is yours? A uh, hash map. My bro taught me a few tricks. He basically knows everything and is awesome. Uh, what the hell is that? You should probably brush up on your data structures. I guess. Uh, did you at least allocate your strife specibus? Um, no. Uh, it could free up a card for you. Plus, let you attack stuff whenever things get too hot to handle. Which is never. What have you got? 
Uh, well, I've got a hammer, but it's trapped under some arms. Wow, you really suck at this, don't you? Just get rid of the arms, then allocate the hammer to the specibus. Uh, how? I don't know, just use the arms on any old thing and see if it works. John, combine fake arms with cake. You stick the fake arms in the cake on your bed. This definitely makes the cake at least 300% more hilarious. You're sure Colonel Sasker would know the precise index of elevated hilarity. John, allocate hammer to strive specimus. You check the back of your strife specimus for the kind abstratus you have in mind for it. John, select hammer. Your strife specimus has been allocated with the hammer kind abstratus. The hammer has been moved from your capture log deck to your strife deck. John, report progress to TG. Okay, I did it. Hammer kind? Uh, yeah. Okay, that will be the permanent allocation for your specimus. I guess I should have mentioned that. Uh, hope you like hammers, dude. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. I can't imagine it's going to be all that relevant. John, capture log, Colonel's big book. Now that you've got some space in your Silidex to work with, you figure you might as well start squandering it immediately. Ordinarily, this ridiculous book would be way too heavy to carry around in any practical way. You guess maybe this is one respect in which the cards present some convenience. John, examine GamePro magazine. GamePro! Superb. Uh, why the game of the year or whatever is as good as some other stuff I like that's better? John, read article. Uh, so, okay, Superb is this game that a lot of cats seem hella pumped of. And, uh, this beta is sitting on my desk for review, so I'm like, yeah, man, I'll write something. But I don't know, I'm like, so this is about houses or some noise? That's fine. I'm sure that, like, fucking dynamite in a handbag for some brosifs. But all I'm saying is, what do you get to thrash anything while you're playing house or some shit? Are you ever in jeopardy of getting mud on your doll's dress or whatever from busting out, and I quote, the mad stunts all wicked up ins? Know what I'm saying, bro, yo, ma? I didn't actually play the game, but I gave it 1.5 hats out of 5 keep it real. At this point, I'd like to give a shout out to my boy, Dennis, who was all over the other day. Uh, we were going to chill in front of the Dark Knight, and he was so psyched of it, y'all. So, this one time, he was leaning against the screen door, and the ship popped open, and the back deck was wet, and he, and he slipped down the steps and broke his thumb on the lawn. It wasn't a long fall, but hey, I guess a thumb bone wasn't made for supporting the brunt of a huge useless tool against wet grass. We never did watch Dark Knight on account of Ron trucking his ball and candy ass girth in the hospital. But it's but it's cool. I still get another watch should be Brutal Rwanda. Bro notes. Dennis was so wasted. Haha. -ha. I mean damn. John, capture log game bro. It might come in handy if you need something that burns easily. John, capture log magician's hat. You expend your final card on the magician's hat. John, get funny glasses too. You don't have a free card in your Silidex. However, you are able to merge the beagle puss with the magician's hat to create a clever disguise. John, wear disguise to fool dad. John, who is this John you speak of? You're quite certain there never has, never been, nor ever will be yeah, this is a really shitty disguise. While you, while you are wearing the items, they remain on the card, but it's temporary, temporarily removed from the deck, thus freeing up the cards beneath it. John, leave room. You exit into the hallway. On one wall hangs a picture of a fella who sure knows how to have a laugh. A man after your own heart. You always thought he looked a lot like Michael Sarah, but your dad swears on the many hallowed tombs of Egypt that it is not. You're not sure about that, though. On the other wall is one of your dad's stupid clowns, or Harlequins, as he is quick to correct anyone who can venture such brazen assumptions. John, go downstairs. The accursed odor of fresh baking wafts into your newfound nostrils. Something is brewing in the kitchen. It must be the connivings of your arch-nemesis, Betty Crocker. 
and the rich, buttery aroma of our plot stinks to high heaven. This mission is going to be more difficult than you imagined. John, admire Harlequins. You check out the shelves of fanciful Harlequins. Look at this fucking garbage. You hate this stuff. Funny is funny, but your dad sure can be a real cornball. Sometimes at night, you pray for burglars. John, examine fireplace. A bright orange flame flickers in the fireplace. It doesn't matter that it's April and not terribly chilly outside. In a home, a fireplace needs a fire, because that's what fireplace is for. A fire belongs in a fireplace, damn it. Katapsha gorically at all times, without exception. A domestic myth of unaccountable origin holds. A home borrows the spirit of the flame for as long as it makes a guest of it, much as the moon takes liberty with the sun's rays. The moon's an errant thief, and her pale fire she snatches from the sun. Quoted from Mark Twain. You are almost certain Mark Twain said that. John, toss game bro into fire. It doesn't burn as quickly as you hoped. Each Game Bro magazine is guaranteed to be printed on 40% recycled asbestos. For big ups to Mother Earth, yo. John, fondly regard cremation. You examine the sacred urn containing your departed Nana's ashes. When your father gives her portrait a wistful glance now and then, you can tell it brings back painful memories. A tall bookshelf, a ladder, an unabridged Colonel Sassacres. He never wants to talk about it. John, topple urn. You clumsily mishandle the sacred urn. Ash is everywhere. In retrospect, upon mulling cinematic tropes regarding ash-filled urns, this outcome was a virtual certainty. You'd better, you'd probably better clean it up before Dad finds it. Combine Father's pipe with clever disguise. You think now would be a good time to beef up your clever disguise. John, examine oversized gift. Champ, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. I believe in you. Contemplating what could be little, what could be inside this package is sort of exciting, but it makes you a little nervous at the same time. John, open large present. Oh, hell no. John, capture log ashes. First, you prop the Harlequin doll up on the couch. Having it, having it in the middle of the floor sprawled out all akimbo like that struck you as unseemly. You capture log the ashes to your available card. John, combine ashes with urn. You merge the sacred urn with the ashes. Most of the ashes back in the urn but it's a total mess. Really, it probably would have been tidier if you just used a broom and dustpan. John, put urn back. No one will be the wiser. Except maybe for people with eyes. John, go get fake arms again. You just got another brilliant idea for something to do with those pointless arms. You pry them out of the cake and capture log them. Looks like Pester Chum is acting up again. John, examine third and fourth walls of room. Huh. John, check pester chum. Another one of your chums is messaging you. John, check message. Um, I understand you've recently come into possession of the beta release of The Game of the Year, as featured in respectable peri periodicals such as Game Bro Magazine. Uh, that's an ugly rumor. Whoever told you that is a filthy liar. And you should probably stop hitting on him all the time or whatever. I can't control myself. I must have a weakness for insufferable pricks. Uh, anyway, I still haven't checked the mail. My dad has it. I'm trying to get it from him, so BRB. John. What? You're wearing one of your disguises now, aren't you? 
You are typing to me right now while wearing something ridiculous. Uh, no, why would you even think that? That's so stupid. Okay, why don't you go get the game from your father? Alright, wish me luck. Uh, oh, by the way, JK, I was wearing a funny disguise this whole time. Gotcha! <laughs> I know, John. John, go back downstairs. You can now execute that brilliant idea you had. There should be just enough frosting on the fake arms to serve as an adequate adhesive. John, attach arms to doll. <laughs> you don't care what Colonel Sasker says. That makes it at least a million percent funnier. John, inspect burnt paper on the floor. You put this back in the fire where it belongs. John, throw present wrap in fire. As long as you're cleaning up. John, capture log doll. You can carry hefty items, but that thing is just way too big. Get real. Besides, you don't even want it. John, read Colonel Sassaker's text. You thought about consulting the text to determine exactly how hilarious the doll is now. But this text is way too big to navigate in a timely fashion. You decide to forget it. John, find Dad and retrieve mail. The door on the left leads to the kitchen from which the smell of baking wafts. A powerful aroma which could lift an especially portly hobo off his feet. The door on the right leads to the study where your dad spends a lot of time. He could be in either room. Where will you go? John, go in the study. It doesn't look like he's in here right now. John, examine father's desk. On the desk is a deck of playing cards. One of your dad's pipes. The April issue of the Serious Jester magazine and a stray capture log card. There's also a can of peanuts on the desk. <laughs> oh, Dad, you'll be falling for that one again anytime soon. A severe, a severe peanut allergy is a terrible affliction to cope with. John, upgrade costume with hat from Hat Rack. You swap the magician's hat with the bowler hat. This disguise is somewhat less funny, but a lot more distinguished looking. John, combine second pipe with clever disguise. Your dad maintains numerous pipes around the house. A father without a pipe is like a strapping roughneck without a toothpick. That is to say, he is a rather piss poor excuse for a roughneck if you ask me. You'd rather not take the pipe though. The first one tastes bad enough as it is. How you suffer for your comedy. John, examine capture log card. Yes! This will be perfect for expanding the space of your scylla. John, capture log, capture log card. Ah! S. John. Play haunting piano refrain. 